Hello and welcome to Gengary Matt's live broadcast number 94, if you can believe it. Um, this will be a little sneak peek into the continuing development of Game Guru Max. But before I go away any further, I just want to make sure to a little window I have on an off-screen monitor whether everybody can hear me loud and clear. And if you can, then I can proceed with what I would like to share with you today. So I'm looking out for anyone to say, yes, Lee, we can hear you. We can hear you loud and clear. Please continue. And so to avoid an awkward silence between us, um, I'm just going to say up front that please do, if you're joining us live, to ask your questions. Put a question mark at the end. We can hear you loading clearly. Thank you very much, Jay Birdmax. So I want to show you two things. First thing, I want to show you a demo because uh, if you've tuned into the last couple of broadcasts, we're now split it equally, roughly equally, into two sections. The first section is a demonstration, so I get to demo something, and the second part is a Q&A, where you get to ask your questions, and I answer as many of them as I can in the reasonable amount of time that we allocate and agree between us. And so the thing I would like to show you today is a demo that's going to go into the build at some point. It's a really cool one. I haven't played it all the way through, so I'm going to be uh, ex exploring it <laughs> pretty much as you, as you see me run through the level. I'll be exploring it as well, but I've got enough bits and pieces to start the ball rolling. Um, and yes, another thing, we are joined with, uh, by Zach and other team members of uh, TGC, and they will be answering, if they can, your questions whilst I'm doing the demo. And any questions that they cannot answer, or would like me to answer, they'll repeat those questions once we start the Q&A session, and I'll answer the questions from that moment. So it saves uh, me having to repeat an answer that may already have been given. So without further ado, let's go and have a look at... I've already preloaded the level, which is here. But what I want to show you first is this video, and I'm going to stay quiet. Um, and I'm just going to play the video because I just received it literally 10 minutes ago and it's pretty cool. So I want to play it and hopefully you can hear it. So here we go, full volume, play, full screen. And uh, that will actually go into the demo. It will be triggered when the, de uh, the game level first starts and you'll be able to play it, um, the, the, the level and go through it, which I'm going to do very shortly. But before I go any further, I, before I, in fact, I'll just click the button so we don't have to waste waiting for loading. But, what, well, quick, <laughs> we have been optimizing the engine a little. <laughs> so effectively, what you, um, what you saw and what you're going to see is this in any ordinary level? This is actually an imported height map of the actual Grand Canyon. We have the ability within the terrain generator to select a height map of a number of different formats and import them, scale them, and align them, and that becomes the basis of your terrain. So you don't have to procedurally generate some random terrain or meticulously sculpt a terrain. You can actually find um, these height maps, the geographical formations of a famous location, import it, do a little jiggery poker, and then voila, you've got the entire area that you want to set your game level. And so this is the first of those. 
and we'll announce something a little later on. I won't go into too many details where we delve a little more into this really cool feature that has been in there for a while, uh, but we wanted to highlight it because we, we, we suspect not everybody knows about the ability to import a height map. And this Grand Canyon was a great first level. Who doesn't know about the Grand Canyon? Um, we have a great level designer and um, he couldn't help <laughs> taking the initial idea, which was essentially a walking simulator just for walking around the Grand Canyon and turned it into a huge military zombie fest thing. So that's what I'm going to be running around doing now. Now, I, I must admit, I did spend two minutes running around, but um, all I could find was a knife. But in that video uh, intro, you actually saw the, a chest with a lock and, a, and, a, and an AK in the, inside it. That's what I want. But I don't know where it is, so that's going to be part of the fun. As I said, I'm also not going to be playing this level for three hours. Just enough. Now, as I don't have a weapon, and I'm not really going to do fist fights with the zombies because they can eat your brains. I'm going to run to a place where I knew... Here we go. You see these military vehicles in the back I, yeah there you go you got a knife that's a bit better hello guy Ooh. there you go a bit more powerful i think the first one is in here remember what the video set so we can just i don't want to get distracted you see so i'm just gonna get rid of these zombies until i find a gun some of sometimes they resurrect there you go zombies can resurrect so i'm just gonna make sure he doesn't distract me in my uh Exploration of this cave I've just found. There you go. 449 health, not too bad. So, yeah, you remember the video? Uh, what well, the video is actually, it's, I um, don't know exactly how it's done, but I can guess that it was staged characters with paths, then recorded and saved out as an MP4, and then reused as a cutscene for the game level. <laughs> really clever idea. So, you've got some uh, rats in here, but this is as a skull. So I collected the skull and that said one out of three complete. So I'm going to assume, and I think I'm right, there are two more skulls to collect. I do know where there's another one, but after that, I'm on my own. So where did I go? I think it was up here. So uh, the, the level designer has made it quite easy to, to know where to go next. Because if you look on the skyline there, see that huge, sort of looks like a huge golden totem. I'm just going to make sure I'm not going to get eaten by uh, zombies. How do I get across? Ah, oh, there it is. So yeah, we'll follow the paths. So yeah, there it is up on the uh, top of that hill. And uh, yeah, I'm assured that this this terrain, what I'm walking on now, if you went to the Grand Canyon, there's a certain part, which is this exact topography. Now, just, to, just for full disclosure, you see these rocks that line the edges? Those aren't part of the, the height map import or the terrain system. Those are manually added onto the sides of terrain in order to give it that higher detail look. Um, and so that's something, if you wanted that effect, that's something you'd have to do. Um, oh, let's go this way. That's something you'd have to do if you wanted that kind of look. But there's different ways of doing it. And who knows, maybe down the line with Game Guru Max, the terrain generator can maybe generate those for you with different textures and styles. But that's for the future. For now, Let's see if we can find a second skull. And I'm going to the old favourite, which is just run past all the zombies. Oh, unless they can run as fast as you, in which case you really want to be taking them out. Looks like he's, he's not interested in me anymore, which is good. So I can collect skull number two. So I'm going to assume it's over there somewhere because that's they're all going to be on the hill, aren't they? Yeah. Let's see who's going to check. There he is. He wants a piece of me. Mm. There you go. He won't be following me anymore. And rather conveniently, and it's also a good cue, good level design, is give people a path. Give, give a, people a path to follow or something really obvious off in the distance that you can aim for. So you see that path wrapped around that, down here and then across here. And I guess this is the home of the third skull. Um... I'm sure there's a little bit more work that can be done to this level, more sound effects, some music, etc. But yeah, I'm liking this. And the fact that it's actually based off real topography, it's just that extra touch. You can imagine the other places, the other locations you can set your levels. Um, I live in Wales. We have a small Grand Canyon called Mount Snowden. <laughs> 
little little mountain, and yet I've got a height map for it, so I can actually set my own sort of frozen <laughs> Wales Snowdon level, and then take photographs, and then make it up with the correct vegetation, etc. And there's the third skull. Bing, game complete. So obviously this was a standalone executable. Game complete means you've triggered the end of that particular level. If that's the last level, it will go to game congratulations screen and then you go back to your title screen, etc. So yeah, these are really good models, uh, excellent design, and what you are looking at and what I'm running around is a little piece of the Grand Canyon. If I just come out, I'm just going to do the cloud layer so you can see a little bit more. Anyone familiar with the terrain generator will notice the little yellow dotty line. That's your what's called your editable area. The reason we've enforced that is to improve performance. There's no point simulating 10,000 kilometres of landscape if your game is set in a small village on a hill somewhere. Um, but we do we are very generous with the editable areas. I think it goes up to five kilometres squared, which is quite large. And uh, if you study maps of the Grand Canyon, you'll start to see that, wait a minute, I recognise that river, or that junction, or there's a river round here. I think there's something called the Horseshoe, don't quote me on that. Um, so yeah, you're getting the idea. So we'll reveal more in the, the days and the weeks to come on how exactly you can take best advantage of the Terrain Generator's import height map feature. So uh, please do enjoy this level when um, when we add it to the build. You'll find it in the Game Guru Max hub. So that's the demo part. Now I want to show you the Q&A part, which is a little chat window that I have off screen. I'm now going to drag it into the main screen. Et voila. And I'm now going to look for the last question that was asked. And I'm going to start there. If you have a question that you've asked before and you never got an answer, feel free to post it again. Or one of our team moderators will find your question and post. But if that ain't happening, yeah, please do repeat your question. So coming up from the bottom, the first question with a question mark on it is a very nice demo. Really impressive. Thank you very much. No, that's all. Um, more to come. <laughs> right, here's the first question from the bottom up from uh, uh, Kitakazi. Question, is there a maximum amount of the logic connections that can be used in a single level? There are some limits. Each object can have 10 logic connections. So think of like um, a switch. And the switch, when pulled or activated, can open 10 doors or activate 10 things. But there isn't really any limit to the total number of logic connections. Every object, and you can have thousands of them, can each have 10 logic connections. And you can interconnect those objects as well. So if you think about it, if object A connects to object B, uh, object B is also connected to object A. So you can interlink. Um, so one connection is actually the, the property almost of two objects. But I've never ran out. Of, of logic connections. There's never been a scenario where I needed one object to have more than 10 logical influences. If you feel there are gameplay scenarios which need more than 10, do let me know. It's not a difficult number to change. The reason we do put things like these finite quantities in, it's to reduce memory, improve performance. There's always this balancing act between giving you infinity and giving you an engine that will actually play at a decent frame rate. So underneath that one, I, oh, this is from Zach Judges, is it? Oh, sorry, yes, I've answered that one, haven't I? So I'm going to go down to find the oranges. So thanks, Zach. Um, will we be getting any updates to the default selectable AI stand and speak anytime soon? Getting any updates to the default selectable AI? Well, we're certainly adding to the AI. So each of the sort of, say, the melee and the, the soldier and the zombie AI, we slowly add to those properties so you can have can change more things in the behaviours. But we are far from finished in adding new behaviours. As new characters come along with different needs, sometimes that need can be served by expanding the existing behaviours, making those behaviours more powerful. But sometimes when a behaviour is unique enough, we just create a new behaviour and we get a nice icon and then you can select that and that is used by the character. I say character, obviously you can apply behaviours and logic to any object in the game, but I think when people say AI, they generally think about characters and whether they're doing sensible things or very silly things. 
So yeah, look out for more on, on both of those counts and of course non-character behaviours as well. Any feature roadmap? No roadmap to, to, to reveal today. We do have an internal one, naturally. We have to keep a list of everything that we're working on. But we're not, we don't have anything we can share publicly. Reason is, there's a lot of stuff still in flux and we haven't decided what is the best two or three things to release first and in what order to release them. So uh, don't hold your breath over a roadmap, but there is one that we use to make sure that we are doing what we feel are the right things in the right order. Here's another question. When do we get minimaps, radars, navigation bars implemented in the app? Yeah, uh, mini maps and radar. So you can almost imagine a map in the corner of the screen and then overlaid on that and maybe markers for your objectives. Maybe a radar which shows you where the enemies are, little red dots. Maybe yellow dots for allies, stuff like that. Navigation bars, maybe an arrow, so it's a HUD, so it points in the direction of the next objective, etc. things like that. That really is a nice little crossover between a lot of that stuff and the RPG uh, genre, which we will be working on, to bring things that are similar to that, uh, being able to influence the game HUD, putting things on the, on the game screen, which is very much what the minimap and the radar and the navigation bars are. So in the process of creating those for the RPG, it's then a small step to swap in the graphics, make it more of a shooter genre feature, and then we can extend it in that direction. And if we get it right, it means you can customise it. So you're not just waiting for us to, to produce this hard-coded minimap system. We create something that has a few building blocks that we use to create it, but then you can dismantle that and recreate it and customise it the way you want it for your game. The objective, ultimately, is to create a game in Game Guru Max, but nobody knows it was written in Game Guru Max because literally everything has been customised. So that's the goal. A uh, little poll been ran. I think that poll was complete, so... Um, I don't really need to tell you about it because it's too late. Looking for a question mark underneath that vote is uh, this is one from uh, Spider Tech. Any plans to allow small projects and export APK Android? No plans in the short term or the mid term. We have plenty to be getting on with just to support uh, the PC platform with a decent, well rounded game maker. We're not excluding the possibility that a game that you've made can then be exported and played on other platforms. Uh, but as I said, that's not top priority right now, but it's certainly not being dismissed by us at this time. Here's a lot of question marks. Uh, this is from Easy Game Development Tools. When I use the character creator and save the character, why can't I find any files in the specified folder? Where are they? Um, they're in the specified folder. <laughs> what specified folder are we referring to? You'll find them in your writables folder in Files, Entity Bank, and character creator and if you go inside that folder you'll find all the characters that you've created or simply if you don't want to mess about in Windows Explorer just go into the add button into your object library and just tap out characters and you'll actually see all the characters that you've created and then you can select them drag them into your level and then voila characters that you've created can now be in your game question mark question mark who's got the next question mark and this is from uh, Peck Max more of a UI gimmick, but is there plans to minimize the animation of the object selection so there's no preview image and such? Uh, I'm going to have to spend some time to untangle that question. Uh, Max is more of a UI gimmick. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there isn't really anything behind it. There isn't any game mechanics and an entire scripting language and... A, Huge amount of functions and features to prop up a whole game and a games engine and by extension inclusive of a graphics engine. But I suppose it's um, it's, it's a question that needs unpicking. So uh, if maybe you can clarify, that would be awesome. Especially the second part. Are there any plans to minimise the animation of the object selector? Um, does the object selector have animation? Well, if you select an object and the object has animation, you see the animation. There are no plans to minimize that. Um, I think it works pretty well. If you've got an object that has animation, you want to see the animation. So, yeah, please clarify. Uh, I probably haven't answered in any way, shape or form that question. Question underneath from Stefan. Any plans to add footsteps sounds to the zombies? They are remarkably quiet at the moment. A bit <laughs> sneaky. Yeah, they are extremely sneaky. And soldiers are super sneaky as well, even though they're wearing great big boots. 
Um, the code's in. For footfalls, it was just a case of that's feature. You can argue it's a bug, but it's sort of it's a bug borderline feature, and we have real bugs to sort out first. Once the bugs are uh, uh, to a, an acceptable level of edge cases, and all of the main functions that everyone needs all the time, uh, nice and stable and solid, yes. Um, I will activate that extra piece of code, which then means not only can you hear the player walking and running, but you can hear zombies and enemies and anyone else with feet tapping across a metal surface from a good distance away, which will give you that sense of immersion. Okay, here's a question with two question marks from Jotru. Is it possible to make a weapon editor? Forget the. Uh, yeah, you could make a weapon editor if you want, but if you mean, do you want us to make a weapon editor? We have been thinking about it. There's absolutely nothing firm yet, but it was something that was mentioned from the Steam community. Wouldn't it be great if we could customize weapons? So not necessarily making from scratch. That's a lot of work to create a weapon animate it, rig it, make sure it works functionally within your game. Um, but taking a weapon and then customising it to something more akin to what you want in your game, I think that's more a, a reasonable goal. But as I said, very early days, we're still thinking it out, sketching it out. Uh, but, do, but don't despair, we are looking at that sort of idea and perhaps that's a missing component of what I would call a rounded consumer game maker, which we're aiming for when we leave early access. Here's a question from Jay Bird Max. Will we be able to operate vehicles? Yeah, I know it was. I'd set myself up for that, didn't I? <laughs> I showed you a, a jeep and a military transport with the back down, and it almost looked like you could run in the back and grab the steering wheel and set off. There are absolutely no vehicle controls. There's no vehicle physics in Game Guru Max at present. That's not to say that never will be. And in fact, the process of adding this physics and the wheels and the controls have kind of already been done to some degree by the community of Game Guru Classic. And I've successfully ported those experiments into Game Guru Max. But officially, uh, we have other, a few other things to sort out first. Um, it is on our sort of more mid to long term roadmap. Um, it, in order for you to be able to see a vehicle, get in it, drive it down a hill, drive it up a hill, drive it off a cliff. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're, we're looking at that, but it's, it's not on our short term. Our short term is still bug fixes and the key features to round off the game maker. Questions, questions, who's got the next one? Um, uh, this is the question, can you add chromatic aberration effect? We have some post-process effects in the filters tab. Um, yeah, if I just switch off the chat for a sec, hopefully I can get it back by destroying it. Here I go, filter effects, see all these? There's some chromatic stuff going on here. If that's not what you mean, absolutely clarify it in the, in the chat um, and I'll be able to answer it. But if it's not this, there aren't any plans to add the chromatic abbreviation. Da, 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 da. We are looking in a little bit at the, so the emissive stuff and the bloom attached to the, the post processes because um, don't want to go into too much horrible details, but the process of, of rendering emiss emissive colours and bloom um, uses a certain schema to convert HDR data down to something that your monitor renders. So if it's part of that, yes, we're doing a little bit of work in that area. But if, if neither of those things are what you're talking about, no, we have no plans to do chromatic aberrations. Question from Tom, uh, when you add new video tutorials, will we get some step-by-step -step instructions on importing and getting all the textures correctly imported? I uh, already started writing it, actually, yes. They'll be called technical articles and they'll be added to the user manual. Um, you know, videos are great sometimes when you just want to have a quick idea of how to put something together. But when you're preparing an object, creating the object in a 3D modeler, then texturing it, then sizing it, then rigging it, then animating it, and then setting up all the properties and getting into game and then testing it for collision and material type and all the rest of it, you kind of want an article which goes into all the details and doesn't miss anything. So that's actually in progress right now. It's not just me. I'm recruiting all the people who knows about what we've been doing to make these objects, and everyone's going to put their own two cents into it. So by the end of it, we'll have a pretty good... Uh, technical article on how to take you know an idea take it all the way through to an actual game guru max game object 
Just going to check the clock. We're at 27 minutes in. I'm happy to answer a few more questions. I think that's okay. I don't think everyone's bored yet. So the next question down is, um, what's the ETA on PlayStation and Xbox controller support? I thought you were going to say PlayStation version. <laughs> it's a long ETA. The controllers, right. Um, yeah, that's a little closer to home, isn't it? We are going to be doing some VR. And we have to work on controllers for VR. So, obviously the VR kits have their own controllers. But now you're actually edging into that case of people having a controller, setting up what each button does and how it maps to the game. You're practically halfway there to then support the Xbox controller. I do have a PlayStation controller, but I think it's a PlayStation 3, so let me know if actually they have a new controller. But certainly let us know what controllers you want to see supported in Game Guru Max. I have a handful of them going back many years, but I'm sure there are new controllers. Not necessarily VR controllers, but the controllers that maybe you use every day and you want to be able to control your game um, using a controller. I'd be atrocious using a console controller to move around with, and keyboard mouse. Keyboard mouse is first person's best friend. But uh, hats off to you if you can actually use a controller better than someone with keyboard and mouse. I've seen some funny YouTube <laughs> videos about keyboard mouse versus controller, and there's no competition, especially if you're playing PvP. Okay, uh, looking for another question mark. Um, no question mark there. My mistake. Ding, 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 ding. No questions yet. No. Qu oh, here's a question mark from Nightfall X. What about tune effect? No plans to do the cartoon effect, which um, it's a nice effect. We've done it in the past with with shaders. Let's see how many other people want uh, the tune effect, the cartoon shading, which is basically take an object, flick a switch, they get a nice black outline, and then the colours sort of torn down to just like two contrasting colours. Looks really nice and you don't have to do a lot of new art, it's just a post-process effect which just changes what your game looks like. The filter effects do that to some degree and perhaps we put tune shading in as one of these choices which I think makes sense to put it there. But it's not as simple as this, this is just a colour remap. Tune requires a, a whole shader to do it properly because there's, there's a lot of clever stuff that goes on with tune shading. But there's no plans on our roadmap right now. But if a lot of people want it in the community, then we'll hear your voices loud and clear. Another question, this is from Spidertech. Is there a tutorial to import custom FPX characters into Game Gear Max? Not at the moment. The first uh, technical article that we're working on is the one which just tells you arbitrarily how to take any geometry and texture and make it into a workable game asset in Game Gear Max. When we specialise, the next thing we do, we, we go into, we drill, drill down more into rigs and animation, and that's where the character stuff will come in. Um, not only just in finding a character, an asset store, like an FPX character, bringing it in and making it run around and work as a game character in Game Theory Max, but also character creator parts. How do you make your own character creator parts, then use those parts in character creator to use our rig and our set of animations. Uh, but then ha configure the character the way you want it. That actually might be a better route, because when you grab an arbitrary character from an asset store, you may have just like one animation, and then that's it. It walks around, but it can't attack, can't speak, can't do all the other actions that you want, but if you use our ca built-in character creator's rig, you instantly get access to every single animation that any character has. you will be able to add your own animations together in order to create that character that you want. And we'll have technical articles for both of those things, and template files. So we'll give you a temple file that you can load into your favourite uh, package, whether it's Max or Blender, and it gives you a head start, so you don't have to start completely from scratch. Okay, so I think yeah, we've pushed past the 30 minute mark, so I'm going to find two questions from people who have not asked me a question before, and you will be the lucky two to get the last two answers. I'm so spider tech, uh, I think you've asked two, a question or two. Lucas, I don't think you've asked a question, I'll ask again. Oh, the pain. Where can I report errors regarding character behaviours? We have an issues board. If you... Um, where's the best place to find it? Interesting. Yeah, we have an issues board. It's on GitHub. So just go to GitHub, type out Game Guru Max. Uh, sorry, Game Guru. And you, you'll go to a page and click the issues tab and you'll see all the issues. The issues are not only bugs, but feature requests as well. So please do post your um, reports there and then one of our team members will tag them so we'll tag them for priority 
um, whether it's classic MX, whether it's behavior on the AI, or whether it's some logic behavior, more with the script and the properties. And, and we'll do that tagging, and then you'll be able to keep, keep an eye on the issue that you've reported to see where it is in the queue, whether we've already fixed it. When that happens, if you author an issue and we fix it, we mark it a fixed but needs confirmation. And it would be really great if you can keep an eye on your issues. When you see that tag flash up, check out the latest version, and if we fix it, let us know so we can close that issue down. Because quite a lot of uh, issues that we have sorted that the original author hasn't helped us close down that issue. So it's all floating around, it's fixed, but needs a confirmation on it. And the last question of the day, yeah, it looks like this is from X Clan Stinger. And the question is, is the terrain editor faster in Max? The terrain manipulation is kind of slow in Classic. Fundamentally faster, why? Because it's completely written from scratch by a better coder than I. <laughs> it is a really top-notch terrain system. It's procedural, we designed it so you could literally render terrain forever. It uses virtual texturing, so it only uses the textures it needs based on where the camera is. And yes, sculpting and blending, creating ramps, all nice and fast. And you can even change the sculpt speed if you want it nice and slow. So you can make careful detailed edits, you can do that. You can ramp the sculpt speed right at the top and make very aggressive, fast changes to your terrain. So we've left those controls um, to tweak them for your own benefit and how you like to make terrains. So thanks for all your questions. I'm sorry we don't have more time. I'm sure some of you would like to just <laughs> tune in for the next four hours. But I am conscious of the fact that um, if our uh, YouTube videos, that this broadcast will become a YouTube video, uh, nice and snappy, and so you don't have to sit through three hours of the stuff, then maybe you'll get to see a more breadth of content as you switch and swap between all the mini broadcasts that we're going to produce, uh, that we have produced already and what we're going to produce in the future. So thanks very much for joining me. I will be back again next Wednesday at 7pm GMT with another demo and also another opportunity Q&A so you can ask more questions. So uh, yeah, if you are fortunate to join us, next uh, Wednesday at 7 p.m. GMT. I'll be happy to give you another tour of the internal developments of Game Guru Max. So until next week, I'll still say goodbye.